playing catch up here with my repot updates from six months ago. Thank you for joining me. In September, these four candidates were repotted within a couple of weeks of each other. Big major cleanup, two year in the pot cleanup, that kind of thing. And I have uh, the Latoria type, which is a separate video, but both videos I will link below if you haven't seen those and wanted to see what was going on and then see what's happening now. But here's my Dendrobium Roy Tokonaga. And this one has been a bit of a yeah, brain scratch for me. The repot went fine. The characteristics of a Dendrobium Roy Tokonaga roots are like glass. They are very, very brittle. They break easily. And there is no soft repot that is possible or cleanup when dealing with the Roy Tokonaga. So it's radical all the time, every time, no matter how careful one wants to be, how cautious one wants to be. But because of the fact that I received my Roy Tokonaga in September of 2018, I did a repot back then and it wasn't an issue throughout the winter. The roots established really quickly and the orchid was very, very quickly pot bound and bloomed as per her cycle without any issues. Same thing for 2020. Here we are now in 21, repot six months ago. And I wasn't expecting to see such shriveling on the pseudobulbs. This is new for me. So I let her bloom because I wanted to see the blooms. This is a vigorous orchid. I don't really have that many issues with it. But to see such shriveling on the pseudobulbs, even the latest ones, the oldest ones I'm not too bothered about, but the latest ones, yeah, I wasn't comfortable with that. So I cut off 11 spikes prematurely, making a nice bouquet from my desk. But yeah, prematurely, because I don't want to weaken this orchid any further. I tried to pollinate as well one bloom, and that's going to fail. But still, I wanted to make sure that I maintain the health of the orchid overall. Two growths have already come out. This one is still maturing right here, which will give me new roots. And I am sure that it's, she's okay in the pot simply because she is pot bound. And she was very, very loose six weeks ago. Still, six weeks ago after the repot, she wasn't pot bound throughout the winter, which was normally the case when I got her first, she was pot bound within a couple of months. Not this time around. So that's why I cut off all the spikes. I wanted to make sure the orchid stays okay and then she can start producing more new growths. These little ones here are not exactly, you know, the standard size that I would like to see as previously. So Roy Tokonaga is okay. And I'm not concerned now that I've cut the spikes off, but I'm glad I did. She would have bloomed for another six weeks without any problems whatsoever. And yeah, I didn't want to push it that far. The Neifert's Alex Poli, on the other hand, look at this, still in bloom with one spike. Okay, granted, these blooms are now history, very close to being history. Lasted for ages. Started with a little growth in the back, a new lead, which is nice, always welcome. And it repotted at the same time and is completely pot bound once again. No problems with this one at all. I don't have to worry about the desiccation of the canes. Look at that. That is what I wanted to see on my Roy Tokonaga and what I don't have. That's why the decision was made to take off the spikes there prematurely. But here, Neifert's Alex Poli is really, really chugging along. And there's another new growth coming on this lead right here. There it is, even though we haven't cut the spikes off. So this is what I'm looking for six months after a repot. Healthy orchid, no issues. This is not something I find very encouraging, but still, we can intervene in time and not cause undue stress. And then over here are my Brassavola crosses. This is Brassocatlia nanipuakea dogashima. Very, very 
terrible roots when I went to clean up the pot. It was actually shocking and I was concerned that the orchid might not recover. The only thing that gave me hope at the time was that there's a lot of her. I did not split her that time because I wanted all these reserves to work towards making sure the orchid will recover because the roots were really, really bad. And she still isn't pot bound. She is really set back. I have one root that I can see and that I can speak of right there. Just one going in the pot and I am babying that like there's no tomorrow. It's my holy grail for this orchid. On the other side here, I don't see any new roots growing at all. So she is languishing after that repot and after having lost all the roots. And yes, I do believe that it is the setup and she is not happy with the setup. I'm going to remain stubborn though. I don't want to lose this orchid, but there are certain criteria that I need to have in my collection in order to be able to hopefully one day when I'm employed again, have this massive collection and still take care of them. So for two years, she did really well and then she bloomed, but that's the but. I'm not sure that this setup is something she likes. The problem with Brassavola is that they are not happy to have their roots in any kind of media, supposedly. But I have crosses that are absolutely doing fine in this setup. And I'm just worried that this has got underlying issues that initially were not a problem, but when she was shipped and transported, it became an issue after that. And it took me two and a half years actually to get her to bloom. And she was a mature blooming size orchid when I got her. My light levels were too low that I was giving her. And so I put her on my east side. I moved her from my more protected south side, put her on the east side one year and boom, last year she bloomed beautifully. Absolutely gorgeous bloom. So I don't want to lose her, but I need this setup to work. It has to, otherwise I can't, I can't have her anymore. That's the bottom line. So I'm working diligently trying to make sure that she stays somewhat hydrated. There's a lot of foliar spraying going on. Today she got a foliar spray of seaweed early in the morning and I'm protecting her a lot more. I'm not trying to get her to bloom clearly, but um, I need some new growths. You see the subsequent new growth here after the repot, that is not anything to write home about when they should be like this. So my thing here is not happy, but hasn't taken off in the pot either yet. I have one root to write home about and the rest is just living in hope. I am really, really also careful of any kind of signs of scale. That's why I'm looking at this little dot. If that's just a blemish, I think it's just a blemish because once these leaves close here because of dehydration, the scale in here has a field trip if it gets in and you don't see it. So I go around with my spray, alcohol spray and garlic spray ever so often and just spray right into the crevice of the leaf and a closed leaf like this. I open it up at the tip here with my nail. I open it and then I really spray down into the leaf and saturate it. Thank goodness it is the time of year to be able to do that. So it dehydrates very, very quickly. And I can then flush out the surface of the pot with plain RO water so that I don't have alcohol if there are any roots or nubbins or something. Way, there's one. Good girl. Importante. So the alcohol doesn't desiccate something like this because the scale in here can become a problem if it gets to that point. So. This is how I'm trying to help it not get attacked and not be taken down on both sides. I want her to understand that I mean well and I hope that she recovers. Because here's another Brassavola cross, Brassocatlia. This is my Binosa Wabash Valley. And same time, this, the video of these two repots was at the same time. And this one is so pot bound again, as if nothing has happened. Granted, the subsequent growth, again, was a little bit shorter, 
but that's fine considering how radical I can be when it comes to repotting and cleaning up. But here we have new roots growing and they're doing well. And that is already the second flush of roots after the fact that she was repotted. So that's why I'm saying that I have Brasso crosses in LECA and self-watering with absolutely no issues. And now I have one that is a bit languishing. So I am pushing it. I'm going to stay persistent. Um, que sera, sera, you know. But I do hope, I don't want to lose her. But I, I hope she's going to make it. So this is a brief update on the reports from six months ago. I have some catching up to do. And Andre Dumas, if you are watching this video, I want you to know that all your update requests are logged. I have screenshots of your comments. And when the time comes, I will post the videos and update all the orchids that you were asking for a six month update. These guys were on my list. I had to schedule this. The care collapse came in thick and fast. So that is my excuse as to why I haven't done any of the updates that I had promised to do with regards to the structure of my channel. So I hope that this was of interest to you. I have 50% superb results. And funny enough, out of the two categories, be it Latoria or the Brasso Roller Crosses, one's not doing well and one's not doing well from each category. So I don't know what that conclusion might be in case you consider this setup risky, but I'm going to push on and I'm going to keep the faith that we will soon in another six months see that these pseudobulbs will have plumped up. Again, I'm not concerned about the old ones in the back here. These guys, not worried if they stay shriveled. I'm really, really making sure that the health of the orchid and the pseudobulb can recover after such a mass blooming. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your time. If you have any further questions that I didn't cover at this point, please feel free to leave me a comment below and I will be happy to elaborate. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everybody, and stay safe. Please take care. Bye.